Hey YouTube, um, welcome back everybody. Welcome back to the classroom. That's it, you say. I came to you because I have a new arrival. And shout out to all of my subscribers. Um, new, old. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope everyone is doing well. Peace and power to you. I'm coming to y'all today because um, I want to share this new book I just got in. I like PDFs, but I like to have actual books. Therefore, um, when I'm not, I don't want to be on the computer all the time. I work on the computer. So when I can be away from it, I like to have my book and not with a phone in my hand. You know what I'm saying? Just That's my preference. That's why I, I try to print out this stuff. But anyway... I want to say, um, we're back at it. Out of 12,000 views, everyone should go here and donate $1. That would be $12,916. This is not an entertainment channel. I want to um, clear that up. Don't come here for entertainment. You have to do your own research. Don't come here thinking you're going to find something new or uh, have a new discovery or something. That's, that's just not what this is. I'm like sharing the information, but you need to be active in your own education, your own um, awakening, so to speak. I've been saying for a couple of days now, um, you know, all these people, when they used to do the sermon in the church about the dry bones, Everybody be crying and clapping and standing up. But you are the dry bones when you're getting this information and you're tuning in like this is a television show. This is not a television show. This is um, your history. You should be more active in staying um, aware, so to speak. Past, present, and future. Um, Like I said, don't just tune in. And these buttons aren't here just for the sake of being here. You can actually go here and donate. Let's just pull it up before I share. Thank you to the one person that has donated. Um, I really do appreciate it. This button is here for a reason. I'm taking time away from my family. I could be doing a whole lot of other stuff. And I could be reading. Um to myself. I don't have to come here to read. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for tuning in. And if you're you're not giving away your cash, totally understand that. You can purchase some product. Y'all go in Walmart and buy these poisons to put on your skin. I sell product. Um you just click on that button and it's not just one I sell different essential oils. I invest in my business. I don't have one um, kind of oil. I don't sit and it magically comes together. It takes time to make a product, a quality product. Um, I sell black soap. I sell hair and body oil. The black soap is for your hair and body. You don't have to go to Walmart and you're buying soap plus you're buying um, a moisturizer. You can use this stuff. You buy shampoo plus body wash. You can use this all over your body. You can use my hair and body oil all over your body. You can use my sugar scrub. This is coconut, sugar, and sea salt scrub. You can use it all over your body. You can scrub your scalp. If you have having hair growth issues, sometimes you have to scrub it. Um, guys, you know, if y'all have those ball patches, I don't know if it's hereditary. I don't believe in stuff like that. I mean, hereditary me as a stylist. Sometimes you have to shave it all off, give it a good scrub, and then use something to get that growth regoing. My, um, body butter, you can use it on your hair and your body. It's absorbable. None of this stuff is just, it's not going to sit on your skin like your lotions do. Um, you going in the stores, you paying seven dollars for a big bottle of you can't even pronounce what's on the back, but you won't support a small black business. Um, this is where the frustration comes in. And I didn't come here to fuss, but I am gonna let y'all know. We're gonna start letting y'all know. 
because um outside of letting y'all know y'all really don't understand what's going on this is not for your entertainment purposes this is not um anything other than trying to better yourself on all levels you don't have to buy natural product from me i would appreciate it out of twelve thousand views i would appreciate a sale um no sales have come from my youtube um followers i've offered a couple people free product they've turned it down thank you brothers you know um one brother he you know he's like i'll pay for it you know what i'm saying just tell me blah 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 but overall twelve thousand people not one sale my sales usually come from my social media family and friends um out of 235 subscribers not one sale i'm selling stuff support a small business support a small um indigenous owned business um just support y'all support these corporations with no hassle like i say everything's organic it's natural it's pure but y'all don't want it it's more convenient to go pick up something off the shelf of a supermarket and it's your choice but i am going to let you know no thing um i don't have a right to say now moving forward this is a book that i bought I'm gonna bring it up. I don't even know why it's up right now. Let's just go back here. Let's close this out. Um, this is. Let me show y'all. Uh, uh, let me show y'all. Okay. This is the book. I just got in the mail. This is a website you can get it from. I'm not clicking on it. I have my actual book. I'm just going to read. I'm going to Cherokee, of course, first. It has every tribe that's ever been created. It's a like Cherokee, a member of the Iro Iroquois Quoin stock. And language family, the Cherokee are one of the most more prominent tribes in Native American history and also had a crucial role to play in the shaping of the United States. The oral history of the tribe records that the Cherokee migrated south from the Great Lakes, settling in southwest Virginia, western North Carolina, South Carolina, northeastern Georgia, and northeastern Alabama. There is no date accorded to the start of this migration. In their own language, the Cherokee refer to themselves as T-S-A-L-A-G-I. Tasagi. The Spanish explorer De Soto, remember Chief Warhorse um, called De Soto a, a category five as far as hurricanes are concerned, was the first European to encounter the Cherokee. In 1540, they had further considerable contact with the Europeans in the 1700s and in the 1800s. The white settlers referred to the Cherokee as one of the five civilized tribes. Why? Because it was deemed that the people had adopted enough of the characteristics of the Europeans to be deemed civilized by European standards, respected by the whites in ways that perhaps other Indians were not. By 1825, 47 white men and 83 white women had actually married into the tribe. The Cherokee were the first of the Indian nations to accept the European way of schooling and farming. By 1808, they had established as a Cherokee police force, for example, and two years later had abolished blood vengeance, essentially long-running feuds. Further, by 1820, the Cherokee had emulated the style of government belonging to the United States and, and in 1825 had designated capital city, had a designated capital city of the Cherokee Nation, a town that was formerly known as the New Town, as New Town, and was renamed New Ecota, E-C-H-O-T-A. 
However, as well as benefits, the European settlers had brought with them other things that did not, that did not, that did the Cherokee no good at all. Of the population of 6,000 Cherokee people spread across some 64 settlements, smallpox, they brought smallpox and blankets, right? Smallpox claimed half that population between 1738 and 1739. Further, Cherokee people committed suicide, unable to live with the severe disabilities to and disfigurements that came in the wake of the disease. It was the Cherokee who were the first to turn their language into written shapes and symbols with the creation of a Cherokee alphabet by the prominent Cherokee tribal member Sequoia who was born of a Cherokee mother and a white father. It is certain that his mixed race background inspired the need to communicate in the same way as the white settlers and be able to send letters home and receive information from far afield. Because of Sequoia's syllabary, we have access to documents written by the Dida V. Swiggy D-I-D-A, N V W I S G I, the Cherokee medicine men who were the only ones who could read and write since the letters of the alphabet were considered extremely sacred and powerful. The Christian Bible was subsequently translated into Cherokee and a bilingual Cherokee newspaper, the Cherokee Phoenix, was established in 1828. It was, this was the first Native American newspaper. Prior to the 19th century, the Cherokee society was divided into two parts, the red and the, the white and the red. The elders of the white society represented the seven clans of the Cherokee. These elders were effectively and effectively the hereditary priests or any Kutani who led ceremonies and prayers and performed healing acts and rituals of purification. Warfare was considered by this group to be unclean. The red organization was responsible for Warfare after engaging in combat, the warriors had to be ritually purified and cleansed before they were permitted to re-enter the everyday life of the tribe. For some reason, by the time the Europeans encountered them, this cast out system had all but disappeared, and the shamans or shamans of the Cherokee were chosen according to their skills rather than their birth. Prior to the 19th century, the Cherokee were also polygamous. A practice that was more common among the wealthier male tribal members. The tribe were also matrilineal. Any children born were considered to belong to the clan of the mother, not the father. Why? Because the fallen angels um, did not have a father to trace back to. And let me just throw that in now. Um, also, when the children were born, the mother's brothers rather than their father was considered to be the main influence on the children. Couples were allowed to divorce freely. Women made all the major decisions regarding the family. Also with the res respect to the leadership of the tribe itself, alliances between the white settlers and the Cherokee were cemented by marriage. That's what they were doing, mixing and marrying. Um, were cemented by marriage even before the 19th century. The offspring from such marriages helped to build a bridge between the two cultures and none in a more practical and ingenious way than sequoia <laughs> this was the, the fall it was rarer for for a cherokee man to marry a white woman than for a cherokee woman to marry a white man if the former happened the children would be disadvantaged in that because of the matrilineal law they would not be considered to belong to either nation having been born outside the clan and therefore not cherokee However, the progressive Cherokee people passed a law in 1825 stating that the children born to a Cherokee man and a white woman would be included as full tribal members from then on. And this is what Ron March was saying. Um, once they was mixing and mingling, then they wanted the same rights. And people, I ain't even going to go into that. It said later in the 1800s, however, the U.S. government began to impose restrictions on interracial marriages. A European man now had to gain the approval of 10 blood relatives of his prospective bride. Peace and power.